Hi everyone, in this video we are going to solve O-Levels Mathematics Paper 2 in a session May-June 2022 Paper 2-1. So let's begin with the first question. Question 1 in A part. In 2020, the running cost for Frederick's car was $5,200. So this is a running cost we have given. 28% of running cost was spent on insurance. Okay, so let me find how much spend on insurance first. So on insurance, 28% of running cost, that is 28 divide 100 of running cost, that is 5,200. So let me calculate it. 28 divide 100 times 5,200. That is $1,456. $1,456. Okay. Then uh, 3 by 25 of the running cost was spent on maintenance. Okay. So let's see how much spent on maintenance. So on maintenance, 3 by 25 of running cost that is 5200 so let's calculate 3 divides 25 times 5200 is 624 dollars right uh, 740 dollars of the running cost was spent on tax okay the spending on tax is 740 dollars um, yes Okay, the remainder of the running cost was spent on petrol. Okay, so let me find the total spending now. Total spending is basically a sum of all the three, right? So that is 1,456 plus uh, 624 plus 740. Right, so let's add all of them. So we have 1456 plus 624 plus 740. 2820 dollars. So this is the total spending on insurance, maintenance, and tax. Okay, now let me find the remainder. And um, they said the remainder of the running cost was spent on petrol. Okay. And for the first part, calculate the amount Frederick spent on petrol. So petrol is the remainder. So from the running cost 5,200, we need to subtract the total spending that is 2,820. So let me do it. 5,200 subtract answer that is $2,380. So this much he spent on the petrol. That is 2,380. Right. Now, for the second part, in 2021, the tax increased by 1.5%. Calculate the tax in 2021. Okay. So, before the tax in 2020, we have given is uh, $740. Now, it increased 1.5%. Okay. So, we can say that tax in 2021 is the Tax in 2020, that is 740, plus 1.5% of 740, right? So, because first we need to find what is 1.5% of the old tax, that is 1.5% of 740, and then it is increased in, uh, in 2021, so we add that in the old tax, right? So, let's simplify this equation. So, we have 1.5 divide 100 times 740 and then add in 740 751.1 dollars so this is going to be the tax in, uh, in 2021 751.1 dollars part b in january the cost of petrol is two dollars twenty cents uh, per liter Okay, so this is a cost per liter. Now, for the first part, find the cost of 38.7 liters of petrol. Okay, so 1 liter is $2.20. And what about uh, 38.7 liters? So 
so that is equals to in terms of dollar 2.20 is going to multiply with 38.7 so let's simplify we have uh, 2.20 times 38.7 so we have 85.14 dollars that is going to be the price of the petrol uh, for um, 38.7 liters right now for the second part the average amount of petrol Fred, uh, Frederick's car use is 7 liter per 100 kilometers right so for 100 kilometer it uses 7 liters right okay so it means 100 kilometer 7 liter In January, he spent $215.60 on petrol. Calculate the number of kilometers he drives in January. Okay. So, uh, uh, from uh, the information we have given that one liter of petrol is this much. So, if one liter is $2.20, so what is seven liters? Seven liter is seven times $2.20, right? So let's simplify 7 times 2.20, that is $15.4 for 7 liters. Right. So 7 liter is $15.4. It means for 100 kilometer, the cost of petrol is $15.04. Right. Okay. Now, uh, we need to find, uh, in the, it said the number of kilometers and we have given the total uh, cost he spent on petrol in January and we need to find the number of kilometers here. Okay, so basically uh, we need to make a proportion here. So, let me make a proportion for kilometer and dollars. Kilometer is the distance. The total number of kilometers he drives in January and the dollar is the spending, right? Okay, so we have given that for, for 100 kilometer, he spent uh, $15.4 and for how much kilometer, let's say X kilometer, uh, the spending is uh, $215.60, right? Now we need to simplify by doing a cross multiplication. So we have um, 100 times 215.60 equals to 15.4 times x so from here we have x is equals to 100 times 215.60 is going to divide with 15.4 right now let me simplify by using calculator we need to calculate the value so 100 times 215.60 and then dividing by 15.4 that is equals to 1400 kilometer he drives in January okay now for the third part in February the cost of petrol increased to two dollars and 24 cents per liter because but in January we have given that it is uh, um, uh, two dollars and 20 cents uh, calculate the percentage increase in the cost of petrol from January to February. Okay, so for percentage increase, we have a formula that how much is the increase. So from increase is 2.24 minus 2.20. Divide the original up price that is 2.20 multiply by 100. Just simplify. Let me simplify that is um, 2.24 minus 2.20 divide 2.20 multiply by 100 that is equals to 1.818 and if you we do to two decimal place that is 1.82 percent. Question number two. Here are the first four patterns in a sequence using uh, made using gray tiles and white tiles. Okay, we have given pattern 1, pattern 2, pattern 3 and pattern 4. Now for A part, complete the table for the first five patterns in a sequence. Number of patterns, pattern numbers, number of gray tiles, number of white tiles and total number of tiles. 
okay so for first pattern we have six gray tiles and then 10 and then 14 so let's see so in six when we add four we have 10 in 10 when we add 4 we have 14 so in 14 again we add 4 we will get the next number so that is 14 plus 4 is 18 and in 18 we add 4 we will get the number of gray tiles for the fifth pattern that is 22 right okay now uh, the number so it is just adding 4 each time right now for the next is number of white tiles so two and um, eight so adding six here and then eight and 18 adding 10 okay and for the next number if adding six adding 10 the next would me add 14 right so 18 plus 14 makes 32 right now next time we need to add um 14 we add now we add 18 that is 50 so add 18 you will get 50 right now the next is total number of tiles just add we will get the total 18 plus 32 that is 50 and 22 plus 50 is 72 right now for the B part, find an expression in terms of N for the number of gray tiles in a pattern. Okay, so the number of gray tiles, first let me write down the sequence for the gray tiles. So the gray tiles are 6, 10, 14, 18, 22 and so on. So it means when we add 4 each time, we will get the new number. So adding 4 each time. So it means the first difference is constant, right? So keep in mind when the first difference is constant, when first difference is constant, we have a formula for the sequence, the nth term. We can say Tn equals to A plus N minus 1 into D. Right, so A is basically the first term and D is the common difference, right? So I'm going to substitute the value. So over here, T is equal to so the first term is 6 plus N minus 1, the common difference is 4. So that is equal to 6 plus 4N minus 4 and that is equal to 4N plus 2. So that is the nth term Tn, 4N plus Right. Now for the C part, uh, pattern K has 98 gray tiles. Find K. Okay, 98 gray tiles. And we know that the nth term for gray tile is this. We need to find the value for K. So we have 4K plus 2 equals to 98. For the gray tile, we are using the nth term for the gray tile. Right. So solving for K just 4K equals to 98 subtract 2. So 4K equals to 96 and K equals to 96 divide 4 and what is 96 by 4? That is 24. So the K value is 24. Now for the D part, find an expression in terms of N for the number of white tiles in pattern N. So we have a sequence for white tiles. Let me write down the sequence first. So that is 2, 8, 18, 32 and 50. 2, 8, 18, 32 and 50. Right and so on. Right. So as you can see, the first difference is not constant. Uh, in 2, when we add 6, we will get four, uh, 8. 8 adding 10 makes 18. 18 add 4, 14 make 32. 14, uh, 32 add 18, it makes 50 and then so on. So the first difference is not constant. Let me take the second difference. The difference between 10 is 6 and 10 is 4, adding 4. 10 and 14 is adding 4. 14 and 18 is adding 4. So you can see the second difference is constant here, right? So when the second difference is constant, we have a formula. When second difference 
is constant. So when the second difference is constant, we use this formula. Tn nth term equals to a plus n minus 1 d1 plus d2 divides to n minus 1 n minus 2. Okay. Now what is a? a is the first term of the sequence that is 2. So we have Tn equals to 2 plus n minus 1. D1 is the first difference. The first difference is 6. Plus D2 is the second common difference that is equals to 4. So 4 by 2 into n minus 1, n minus 2. Right. So let's simplify it further. So that is equals to 2 plus 6n minus 6 plus that is 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 is outside. And let me simplify this n square minus 2n plus uh, minus n plus 2. Right. So let's open the bracket. And if I do the rest of the steps here. So tn is equals to 2 plus 6n minus 6 plus 2n scale. Okay, so we have uh, minus 2n and minus n. So that is minus 3n. And minus 3 times 2 is equals to minus 6n. And 2 times 2 is 4. Right. So now we have um, positive 6n and negative 6n is cancel out. And 2 minus 6 is minus 4. And now this is minus 4 and plus 4 is cancel out. So the nth term you can see is just 2n scale. So that is answer is 2n scale for uh, y tiles, right? Now moving to part E, uh, find the total number of tiles in pattern 20. Okay, so for total, total number of tiles is basically the number of gray tiles plus the number of y tiles. So we have the formula for the gray tiles. So that is gray plus white. That is the total. Okay. So now we can say the total gray are 4n plus 2. And um, for white, we just got that is 2n scale. That is the total. Now the question is find the total number of tiles in pattern 20. When the pattern is 20, it means when the n value is 20. Right. So we need to put n equals to 20. We will find the total number of tiles. Right. So 4 times 20 plus 2 plus 2 times 20 scale. So let me simplify. So first we have 20 scale and it is going to multiply with 2 that is 800 and add 2 that is 8, 8 or 2 and then add uh, 4 times 20 that is 882. So the total number of tiles for Pattern 20 is 882. Question number 3. In A part, the graph shows the cost in dollars of buying a length of fabric T meters long. Okay. So, you can see the um, uh, vertical, it is uh, length of fabric in meters and horizontal line shows the cost in terms of dollars. Now, for the first part, use the graph to find the cost of buying 3.8 meter of fabric. Okay, so fabric is vertically 3.8 meters of fabric. So first we need to point where is 3.8. So we have a point 3.8 over here. Let me draw the line at 3.8 and find the corresponding solution in terms of dollar. Mm. Yes, that is the line. And that is equals to $28. Yes, this line, the two. So that is $28. Now, for the second part, Samira buys K meter of fabric. She pays um, uh, with a $20 note and receive um, $1.50 change. Use the graph to find the value for K. Okay, so how much she paid? So she gave $20 and the change. So 20 subtract 1.50. So that is 18.5. So from here, we came to know that 20 minus 1.50, that is equals to 
dollars that is the cost and we need to find the value for k that is a k meter of fabric right so 18.5 where is 18.5 on the graph we have um, two lines below 20 is 18 and this middle one is 18.5 so let me draw the straight line from 18.5 that is 18.5 and find the corresponding value for k that is the value for k let me check so that is 2 and 2.1 2 3 4 5 so that is 2.5 meter of fabric that is a value for k 2.5 okay now for part b nita cut 10 meters of fabric into three lengths to make a blouse a skirt and a dress the length of fabric needed to make the blouse the skirt and the dress are in the ratio 6 ratio 8 ratio 11 okay so this is a ratio we have given right uh, find the length of fabric that is cut to make the dress Okay, so blouse, skirt, dress. Dress is for 11. We need to find the length of fabric. Okay, so that's pretty easy. So we can say for dress, which ratio is for dress? 11 is for dress. Divides the total ratio is 6 plus 8 plus 11. Multiply uh, the meter of fabric that is 10 meter of fabric that we have given. So let me calculate it. So first, we will add the denominator 6 plus 8 plus 11 that is 25 so 11 divides 25 and then times by 10 that is equals to 4.4 meters yes this one much is needed for the dress 4.4 meters now part c the upper bound for the area of a rectangular piece of fabric is 8.8125 meters square so that is the upper bound and it this the area of the rectangular piece of fabric the width of the piece of fabric is 2.3 meters correct to the nearest 0.1 meters the length of piece of fabric is d meters correct to the nearest 0.1 meters find the value of d okay so we have given the information that the area is given to us and we know that the area of a rectangle is equals to length times width so we know the area of a rectangle is 8.8125 so 8.8125 and that is the upper bound so it means uh, we we need to use the upper bound for length and the upper bound for width as well right so for length we have d and for upper bound we add 0 0.1 by 2 that is going to be the length into the width is 2.3 correct to the nearest 0 0.1 meter but for upper bound we add 0 0.1 by 2 right now let me simplify so that is first let me do this one 0 0.1 divides 2 and then add 2.3 that is equals to 2.35 so 8.8125 equals to d plus 0 0.1 divides 2 into 2.35. We just have to solve for d. So first we need to divide this. So 8.8125 is going to divide with 2.35 and that is equals to d plus 0 0.1 over 2 now 8.8125 divide answer that is equals to 3.75 3.75 and then this term minus 0 0.1 by 2 equals to d right so 0 0.1 divides 2 is basically 0 0.05 yes 3.75 subtract answer is uh, 3.7 that is the value for d 3.7 meters yes the length 3.7 meters question number four in a part a cuboid has dimensions x centimeter by x centimeter by 10 centimeter the volume of a cuboid is 62.5 centimeter cube find the value for x okay so first we need to use a formula that volume of cuboid is length, width and height. 
right so we have the volume that is 62.5 and that is equals to length is x width is x height is 10 right so we have 62.5 equals to x square times 10 right to get the value for x we can do x square equals to 62.5 over 10 right so what is 62.5 over 10 62.5 divides 10 is 6.25 and uh, that is the value for x square 6.25 and to get the value for x taking square root on both sides square root of answer is 2.5 so that is the value for x 2.5 centimeter is the length and the width now for part b a piece of card a o b a o and b uh, is a sector of a circle center o with angle 84 degrees and a radius 15 centimeter now for the first part show that the arc length of a sector is 7 pi centimeter okay so that is a sector we need to find the arc length so this is the arc a b so the formula the formula for arc length is theta over 180 pi r that is the formula for arc length so theta we have given is 84 degree over 180 degree pi the radius is 15 so just simplify we will get the arc length that is 84 divides 180 and then times by 15 that is 7 and this pi so we got 7 pi centimeter yes now for the second part uh, oa is joined to ob right so when you connect oa with ob to form the curved surface of a cone calculate the radius of the cone okay so let's visualize so when we connect oa with ob we will get the curved surface of the cone it means we have the circular one at the top and that is this is an arc length so uh, it means that uh, the curved surface of cone it means we have a circle at the top and that is the circumference we can consider it as a circumference of a circle is going to equals to this a b and that is the arc length right so it means the circumference is going to be equals to arc length when we join OA with OB right and we know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r and arc length we just got is 7 pi right so we can cancel the values pi and pi and the radius we have is uh, 7 by 2 and 7 by 2 is 7 divides 2 is equals to 3.5 so the radius is 3.5 uh, centimeter now for third part find the height of the cone okay so the radius we got is 3.5 right and this is going to be the height if we yes this is going to be the height that we need to find it and this radius is 3.5 okay so if we consider this as a right angle triangle you can see it is a right angle triangle so we can use the Pythagoras theorem over here so height scale plus 3.5 scale is equals to 15 scale right and height scale is equals to 15 scale minus 3.5 scale and the value for height is going to be equals to square root of 15 scale minus 3.5 scale. Right. So let's simplify. 15 square minus 3.5 scale and square root of answer is equals to 14.58 or if we round it is 14.6 is the height centimeter.
Part C, an empty barrel in the shape of cylinder has a radius 20 cm and height 80 cm. The barrel is filled with water at a rate of 5500 cm3 per minute. So in one minute, this much of the volume is filled. This much of cylinder is going to be filled. Calculate the time taken to completely fill the barrel. Give your answer in minutes and second. Correct to the nearest second. Okay. So it is in the shape of a cylinder. So it means we need to find first the volume of a cylinder. Volume of cylinder. That is equals to pi r square h. Right. So let me find the volume. So pi radius we have is 20 scale and the height is 80. So let's calculate it. Pi is 3.14 times 20 times 20 times 80. So 100480. That is the volume of a cylinder or the barrel. Right. Um, and we have given the information uh, in one minute, this much volume is going to be filled with water. So in how many minutes the whole cylinder is going to be filled, this much volume is going to be filled. So let me make a ratio over here. So if we have a ratio for time and the volume, right, so we have for one minute, the volume is five. 1500 volume of uh, the barrel is going to be filled and in how many minutes let's say in x minutes the whole barrel is going to be filled and the, the volume of the whole barrel is this much 100480 right now let's simplify across multiplication this and this so 5500x is equals to 100480 and the value of x is going to be 100480 divides 5500. Okay, so let me simplify. We have 100480 divide 5500. And this is equals to 18.2690. Um, so this first 18 is in terms of minutes. So that is 18 minutes. If I can write this here. 18.2 six nine zero so this is 18 minutes how can we find the seconds to get the second we need to subtract 18 so this much is the seconds right and for seconds we are just multiplying it by 60 because we are converting minutes into seconds so we are multiplying by 60 that is 16.14 or just 16 seconds so 18 minutes 16 seconds Question number five in A part, complete the table of values for y equals to this function. So when x equals to minus three, the y value is missing. So just simplify putting x equals to minus three in the given equation. We have uh, minus three whole cube minus four times minus three and then plus three. So three cube is 27 and minus three cube is minus 27 plus 3 times 4 is going to be 12 and then plus 3. So let me simplify. Uh, minus 27 plus 12 plus 3 is negative of 12. That is minus 12. Right. Now for the second part B, draw the graph of this function for x is between minus 3 to plus 3. So that's easy. So when x is minus 3, y value is negative of 12. So it is down. When x is minus 3, y is minus 10, 11, and 12, this point, right. Next point, for minus 2, it is 3. Yeah, minus 2, it is 3. So we have 1, 2, and 3, this point. For negative 1, the value is 6. Negative 1, we have 5, and 2 blocks up is 6. For 0, it is 3. For 0, it is 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay. For 1, the value is 0. When x is 1, y is 0. This point. For 2, it is 3. For 2, it is again 3. 
right and for 3 the values 18 for 3 15 16 17 18 this point so let me connect all the points to get a smooth curve let me do it make sure your curve passes through each and every point it's a cubic function and the last point so this is a curve for the given function now for part c by drawing a suitable straight line on your graph find the solution of this equation okay so first we need to find which line we need to draw so we have this given equation that this i'm going to write first and compare with the given one okay so the equation we have is y equals to x cube minus 4x plus 3 and this equation is x cube minus 4x minus 2 equals to 0 okay so to simplify we need to subtract it minus plus and plus so this is cancelled this is cancelled here we have y equals to plus 3 plus 2 is 5 so y equals to 5 is the straight line that we are going to draw so let me do it y equals to 5 this is the line this straight line yes now we need to find the solutions that are basically the values for x so it cut at this point this point and this point so this is uh, about your curve so the first point we have is minus 1, okay, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, minus 1 1.5. This point is uh, negative 0 0.5. And this is 2.1, 2.25. In the middle, I got. So we have three solutions three values for x x equals to minus 1.5 x is equals to minus 0 0.6 and x is equals to 2.25 question number six the diagram shows a field a b c d drawn uh, to a scale of one centimeter to 50 meters right for A part, the field has a straight path from D to the midpoint of AB. Okay, so first let me draw the straight path from this D to the midpoint of AB. So we need to find the midpoint of AB first. So let me find the length of AB in terms of centimeter. For me, this is exactly 8 centimeter. You guys can see. And the midpoint of AB is 4 centimeter. This point. Right. This is a midpoint. So let me draw from the straight path. That is from D to the midpoint of AB. This line. Right. Um, draw the path. We already drew the path. Uh, and measure the angle the path makes with um, CD. C to D. Okay. Let's measure. So basically, we need to measure this angle, the path with CD, uh, DC, sorry. Okay, so let me measure the angle. Yes, this angle is 44. Yes, I got 44 or, yes, 45. Yes, this is 45 degrees. This is the angle that the path makes with DC. 45 degrees now for part b grass is to be planted on an area of the field the area is to be planted um, is to be less than 325 meters from b this is the first let me solve less than 325 meters from b and we have given that one centimeter has 50 meters so one meter is equals to one over 50 
centimeters right and for this meters 325 meters is 325 divides 50 centimeters so let's do it 325 divides 50 6.5 centimeters okay so less than 6.5 centimeter from b it means we need to make an arc at point b and uh, the length of that arc is 6.5 centimeter okay so we need to open the compass with the length 6.5 centimeter so let me show you the 6.5 centimeter no it is less let me open it mm, seven centimeter this is exactly equals to 6.5 centimeter you can see it again 6.5 centimeter so we need to draw an arc from point b put it at b and draw an arc that must be inside yes okay that is less than three uh, uh, 6.5 centimeter from b right now for the second near to cb then to cd okay cb then to cd it means we need to make an angle bisector at this point draw an angle bisector angle bisector of um, angle c means uh, because c is common so we can say b c d right so let me draw the angle bisector for this angle c so for this we need to use the compass put it at c wait yeah put it at c so first we need to cut the line bc and then the line dc right and then on those arc Put it on the first one draw the new one and for the second one draw another one and this point of intersection is the angle bisector of angle bcd right let me connect this with an angle c the point c right now for the and can only be on one side of the path so as you can see this is the path and it can be on this side or on this side of the path keep in mind right only one side by drawing uh, appropriate loci find and shade the larger possible area for the grass to be planted okay so we need to shade the area which one okay so again less than this is 6.5 centimeter from b so from b this is point b and this is 6.5 centimeter and this portion is more than 6.5 and this is less than 6.5 right so less than 6.5 centimeter from b this is going to be the first option right and then near to cb then to cd okay near to cb this near to cb closer to cb than to cd right and it must be on one side of the path this side or this side so which one is going to be shaded this area is going to be shaded because it covers all the three conditions the first condition that is less than 6.5 from b uh, closer to cb this is closer to cb and this is also one side so the shaded region is going to be let me draw the shaded one this region is going to be shaded the green one that i'm going to draw the lines so in this region the grass is going to be planted in this region path c find the actual length of the part of the path that forms a boundary for the grass okay so as you can see this is the line for the path now the this is part of the path forms the boundary for this grass right so now we need to measure the actual length in terms of centimeter by using a ruler first 
so as you can see we have this point is okay 2.5 2.6 2.7 it's 2.8 centimeter for me it is 2.8 centimeter and we need to measure the answer in terms of uh, meters by using the given scale we have a scale one centimeter has 50 meters right uh, according to this scale so one centimeter is 50 meters so 2.8 centimeter is going to be 2.8 times 50 centimeters so let me calculate it 2.8 8 times 50 is 140 meters yes so the answer we have is 140 meters question number seven in a part yasi travels to work either by car bus train or bike the probabilities of using these means of transport on any work day are shown in the table now in the first part find p so p is the probability for bike and we know that the sum of all these probability is equals to 1.00 when we add all of them so we will get the value for p so 0 0.12 plus 0 0.40 plus 0 0.26 plus p is equals to 1.00 right so let me add them so first 0 0.12 plus 0 0.40 plus 0 0.26 that is 0 0.7978 sorry so p is 1 subtract 0 0.78 so 1 minus answer that is 2.0.22 that is for p right now for second part find the probability that on monday and tuesday he travels to work by train on one day and by bus on the other day okay so we have uh, uh, by train and then by bus so we have a probability that on Monday he travels by train and by on Tuesday he travels by bus right or we have a probability that on Monday he travels by bus and um, on Tuesday he travels by train so Monday train and Tuesday bus or Monday bus and Tuesday train right so we have all the answers for the probability for bus and the train bus is 0 0.4 train is 0 0.26 so we have um, 0. Point, uh, sorry train 0 0.26 is for the train for and we multiply for bus we have 0 0.40 or means add and uh, for bus again that is 0 0.40 times and is multiplication and uh, train is 0 0.26 0 0.26 times 0 0.40 plus 0 0.40 times 0 0.26 0 0.28 so that is the probability now for uh, part three find the probability that he travels to work by bus at least once on wednesday or thursday by bus okay so the probability of bus we have is 0 0.40 and the probability of not by bus let's say b prime is not by bus is one minus probability of bus that is equals to one minus 0 0.40 so we have 1 minus 0 0.40 is 0 0.6 so if he travels by bus on wednesday that is 0 0.40 and not travel by bus is 0 0.40 0 .0, yes and 0 0.6 okay so again we have two cases so the first case the probability that on wednesday he travels by bus and on thursday he travel not travel by bus or the probability that on wednesday he not travels by bus and uh, on thursday he travels by bus right again we are just substituting the values so we have for bus 0 0.40 and means multiplication not by bus is 0 0.6 
or means addition not by bus is 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 for the bus so let me simplify again so we have 0 0.40 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 0 0.48 that is the answer for the probability 0 0.48 part b yasi records the length of time he spent at work on each of 70 work days time T hours and frequency we have given in the table. Now for the first part, complete the histogram to represent the data. Okay. So for histogram, we have given the time for hours and frequency density. And in the table, we have given the time and the frequency. So it means we need to find the frequency density. Right. So we have the formula that frequency density is equals to frequency over class width. Right. So we have the frequency. We need to find the class width. So the uh, 2 and 6, that is the class width is 2, the difference between 6 and 4 basically, right? 4 and 6, sorry. 6 and 7, the difference is 1. 7 and 7 half, it is 0 0.5. 7 half to 8, is it, it is 0 0.5. 8 to 8, 3 by 4, that is 0 0.5. 75 and uh, okay let me show you if this is a confusion for you so what is 8 3 by 4 so 4 times 8 plus 3 divides 4 this 8 to 8.75 so when you subtract 8.75 minus 8 that is 0 0.75 right so this is 8.75 so 10 subtract 8.75 that is 1.25 that is the class width, right? Now let me find the frequency densities. Frequency density is frequency over class width. 4 divides 2 is 2. 6 divides 1 is 6. 9 divides 0 0.5. 9 divides 0 0.5 is 18. 23 divides 0 0.5. That is 46. 18 divide 0 0.75, 18 divide 0 0.75, that is equals to 24. And next is 10 divide 1.25, that is 8. So now we can easily complete the histogram. So we have already given that from 4 to 6, that is 2. Yes, this is correct. 4 to 6, the frequency density is 2. From 6 to 7, that is 6. So 6 to 7, that is equals to 6. The next is from 7 to 7 half, it is 18. So where is 7 to 7 half? This is 7 and 7 half. It is 18. So where is 18? So 10 block, 2 blocks below 20. This is 20, 19 and this block is 18. Yes. Next, 7 half to 8 is uh, 46. 7 half to 8, that is 46. 40, 45 and this is 46. Right. The next we have is uh, 8 to 8.75. 8, 3 by 4. That is 24. Okay. This is 8. 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7 and 8.75 in the middle. That is 24. So we have uh, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 this point. So we need to draw the straight line. this point the middle okay the last point is uh, 8.75 to 10 is 8 
here then it's just eight two blocks below then is eight so that is the histogram okay now for the second part um yasir starts work each day at 9 a.m he is over he is paid overtime if he works later than 5 15 p.m okay estimate the number of days he is paid over time during these 70 work days okay so 9 a.m to 5 15 p.m so 9 to 5 is 8 hours so means after 8 hours and 15 minutes uh, over time you will get paid for this over time after 8 hours and 15 minutes so for this 70 work days so this is more than 8 hours right so the, these are till 8 hours that is um, not included in the overtime so this is more than 8 hours but we know that when it is 8 hours and 15 after 8 hours and 15 minutes he will get paid not exactly from 8 hours so this is okay right but for this we need to uh, simplify so as you can see we have 8 to 8.75 right so it means eight to eight three by fourth so we need to break this into sections and its frequency is 18 so let me do it so if we can do eight to eight one by fourth eight one by fourth to eight two by fourth eight two by four to eight three by fourth right so 8 to 8 3 by 4 its frequency is 18 so it means we have how many uh, set uh, groups 1 2 and 3 so three groups so we need to divide its frequency the frequency is 18 so divided by three groups so that is 6 so mean each group has 6 so we have 6 for this 6 is for this and the 6 is for the last one right so so this uh, group is in between 8.15 so means 8 hours and 15 minutes so this group covers 8 hours 15 minutes so from this group so eight more than 8 hours and 15 minutes so these two frequencies 6 plus 6 and the frequency 10 we are going to add to get the number of days he is overpaid during these 7 70 work, uh, days so it means 6 plus 6 plus 10 12 plus 10 that is equals to 22 so 22 number of days is overpaid uh, he's paid over time yes question number eight in a part apples cost x dollars per kilo kilograms and oranges cost y dollars per kilograms the total cost of five kilograms of apples five kilograms for apples x and 10 kilograms of oranges is $40. Now for the first part, we need to show that x plus 2y equals to 8, right? If I divide by 5 throughout the equation, that is x, 5 times 2 is 10 and 5 times 8 is 40. So x plus 2y equals to 8, right? Now for the second part, the total cost of uh, 4 kilograms of apples and 3 kilograms of oranges is $19. So use um, simultaneous equations to find the cost of 1 kilogram of apples and 1 kilogram of oranges. Show your work. Okay, so we have two equations x plus 2y equals to 8. That is the first equation. And the second is 4x plus 3y four apples three oranges and total is 19 that is the second equation so uh, we have a system of equ linear equations you can solve it by method of substitution or method of elimination so here i would like to use a substitution method so from the first equation i can find the value for x that is equals to 8 minus 2y and i would like to substitute that value into my second equation that is 4 times x is 8 minus 2y plus 3y equals to 19 right now let me simplify 4 times 8 4 times 8 is 32 minus 4 times 2 is 8y plus 3y equals to 19 minus 8 plus 3 is minus 5y equals to 19 minus 32 
so 19 minus 32 is negative 13 so minus 5y equals to minus of 13 and y equals to 13 by 5 13 divides 5 1 3 divides 5 that is y is 2.6 that is for oranges because y is represented by orange so 2.6 dollars is a cost for one kilogram of oranges now let's find the value for x for apples so here we have x equals to 8 minus 2 times 2.6 so 2 times 2.6 8 subtract answer is 2.8 so that is the cost of apples for one kilograms 2.8 dollars right now for b part solve this uh, um, inequality so let's do it so first we need to divide by 4 minus 8 by 4 is less than x minus 3 is less than 7 by 4 and then adding 3 minus 8 by 4 plus 3 is less than x is less than 7 by 4 plus 3 so we have minus 8 divides 4 and then add 3 is 1 is less than x is less than 4 by 3 sorry 7 by 4 plus 3 4 uh, 4.75 yes so we have this inequality 1 is less than x is less than 4.75 Part C, solve uh, this rational equation. Show all your working and give your answer correct to two decimal place. Okay, so let's simplify. So we need to do a cross multiplication. 4 times 2x plus 3 plus 2 times x minus 1 and then divide by x minus 1 into 2x plus 3. That is equals to 1. Okay, now this term is going to multiply with 1. So 4 times 2 is 8x, 4 times 3 is 12, 2 2x minus 2, that is equals to x minus 1, 2x plus 3. So 8 plus 2 is 10x and 12 minus 2 is just positive 10. That is equals to x, 2x scale, x with this, and uh, plus 3x minus 2x minus 3 shifting all the terms to, uh, you know moving it to the right let's see okay so 2x scale this term is x plus x minus 3 and this term minus 10x minus 10 equals to 0 so 2x scale and minus 10x over here so we have uh, 1 minus 10 is minus 9x and minus 13 equals to zero right now we need to find the value for x it's a quadratic equation so we need to use a quadratic formula yes x equals to negative of b plus minus square root b square minus 9 square minus 4 a values 2 times the c values minus 13 divides 2 times of a value that is 2 right for the simplification x equals to 9 plus minus square root 9 square is 81 and yeah, negative times negative this will give positive 4 times 2 times 13 104 plus 104 divides with 4 right 81 plus 104 185 so we have x equals to 9 plus minus square root 185 divides 4. Okay, now we have two values for x, right? So first value is x equals to 9 plus square root 185 divides 4, right? And the second value x equals to 9 minus square root of 185 
divides 4 and keep in mind we need to find answer for two decimal place so let's do it for the first one 9 plus k root 185 divides 4 that is equals to 5.65 up to two decimal place so x is 5.65 right for the second we have 9 minus Sorry, 9 minus k root 185 divides 4, negative 1.15. So these are the two values for x, correct to do decimal place. Question number 9, the diagram shows the position of three towns, A, B, C. B is on the bearing of 0, 7, 5 degree from A. B is on the bearing of 0, 7, 5 from A. So this angle is 0, 7, 5, 70, 7, 2, sorry, 72 degrees. C is on the bearing of 150 degree from A. So from A, this whole angle is, let me use the green one. This green angle is 150 degree. Right. And AB is 300 kilometer, A to B. A, uh, AC is 280 kilometer. Now for A part, find the bearing of A from C. Okay, so from C, it means we need to draw the north line at point C. Yes, this is going to be the north line for point C. And we need to find the bearing that is a clockwise angle. This angle. We need to find so as we know this straight line is 180 degree and plus this angle is going to be the bearing right okay so if we use the concept of alternate angles so as you can see this angle and this angle these two are same those are alternate angles so if this angle is 150 this is also 150 alternate angles are equal so its bearing is 180 plus 150 so we have 180 plus 150 that is 330 degrees right now for the b part calculate bc bc this length okay so we know ab we know ac and the angle between them so what is angle between them so the whole angle is one a 50 and the outer one is 72 so this angle is 150 subtract 72 so let me do it 150 subtract 72 is 78 so angle a is this angle is 78 okay so we have angle a we have the two sides and the angle between them and we need to find the side in front of it so we are using law of cosine to get bc okay for law of cosine to get the value for BC, BC scale equals to 300 scale because uh, this is 300 plus 280 scale minus 2 times 300 times 280 cos of the angle between them that is 78. We just got that angle. So cos 78 times 280 times 300 times minus 2 add 280 scale add 300 scale square root of answer that is 365 uh, kilometer is the BC. So BC is 365 kilometer. Part C, town D is 145 uh, kilometer from town B. So the distance between B to D is 145. This says BD or DB is 145 kilometer. Okay. Angle ADB is 120 degrees. This information was also given to us that the angle ADB is 120 degree. Find the two possible bearings of D from A, from this point A. Um, you may add lines to this sketch to help you. Okay. So, 120. 
the angle we have given this information 120 so we need to find the angle that is 120 degree so it means the d can be on this position or on this position because we need to find the two possible bearings so 120 so where is 120 this is 120 so you guys can see we have 120 this is a position for town d right and for down if we find 120 that is 120 this position right so let me sketch the town d this is the town d right and db is 145 kilometer right and this angle is 120 or this is the position for d this is the d that is 120 degrees and this is 145 db is 125 okay now we need to find the two possible bearings of d from a and uh, in the start of the question we have given that the bearing of b um, let me show you yes this is given to us that b is on the bearing of 72 degree from a so from a this whole angle we have given that is 72 this red one right so now we need to find the two possible bearings of d from a so from a this is the d or this is the d so we have two possible um, uh, angles we need to find so from north line to this point we need to find this is the bearing one or from north line to this line this is going to be the bearing two right so we can say that this is bearing one and bearing two right so how can you calculate this so for the first one we have for this bearing it means this hole is 72 from 72 we need to subtract this angle we will get this bearing right are you getting me so basically i'm saying we need to find this angle this angle d a b right so when we will get this angle and we subtract 72 from this angle we will get bearing one right okay let's do find that angle a first so how can you find this angle we have two sides and one angle we need another angle so here we use law of sine yes so law of sine so for law of sine we have um, we can say sine 120 over 300 equals to sine a over 175 145 sorry okay so we have a cross multiplication so here sine a is going to be 145 divides 300 sine 120 let me simplify first tool sine 120 and then we will multiply with this one sine 120 times 145 divides 300 is going to be this and then for a we need to do sine inverse of answer that is 24.7 or 24.744 yeah you can keep 27.4 or 27 25 yes so angle a is 24.7 degree right so we got this angle a so if this angle is 24.7 degree so what is and this whole angle is 72 so from 72 we subtract this angle we will get bearing one right so here let me write down bearing one is 72 degree subtract 24.7 okay 72 subtract answer that is 47.25 or yes 47.3 degrees that's the first bearing and the bearing two right 
bearing 2 is this hole is the bearing 2 it means uh, this angle is 72 right in 72 we add this angle and we will get bearing 2 so it means 72 we add and this angle is again angle a the front is 145 120 that is 300 we will get the same angle by using law of cosine 24.7 so we add 24.7 so let's see so 72 plus 24.7 that is equals to 96.7 so these are the two possible bearings of d from a question number 10 the diagram shows triangles a b and c in a part describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle a onto triangle b Okay, so A to B, the shape is same, so it is a um, translation, yes. So, how much unit it is translated horizontally and vertically? So, this point to this point. So, horizontal translation is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 units left. And this point to this point, vertical translation is 1, 2, 3 units up, 4 left and 3 up. So, we can say translation 4 left and 3 up so minus 4 3 now for the B part find the matrix representing the transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle C okay A to C so A to C it is a reflection across y axis okay so the matrix for reflection across y axis so the matrix representing the reflection across y axis is uh, minus 1 0 0 1 this thing i have already explained in my transformation video i will uh, put the link in the description box below you can go check out the video on transformations and you can easily find out um, the matrix representations as well so the answer is minus one zero zero one right now for part c triangle a is mapped onto triangle d by an enlargement with center two three and scale factor is 3 draw triangle D 2 3 is the center so where is 2 3 x is 2 y is 3 and the scale factor is going to be 3 okay that's pretty easy so first um, we need to find out the points these three points so from center we move one left and one two down so this point is going to be one left and two down this point is 1 right and 2 down. So this is 1 minus 2. And this point is 1 left, 1 down. That is minus 1, minus 1. Right. And the scale factor is positive 3. So I'm just multiplying it by 3. And I will get this minus 3, minus 3. Multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3. And this is going to be minus 3, minus 6 this is going to be 3 and negative 6 okay now we need to find the new coordinates so from this center we need to move three units to the left and three units down so one two three one sorry one two three and one two three so this point is for d and then uh, three minus three and minus six three left one two three and six down one two three four five six this point and three minus six so from this three right one two three and six down one two three four five six this point so let me connect all the points to get the triangle d so this is the triangle d This is an enlargement with a scale factor 3. So here it's 1. So it is 1, 2, 3. So this is a triangle D having coordinates minus 1, 0, uh, minus 1, minus 3 and 5, minus 3. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर अलेवन पी इज़ द पॉइंट थ्री माइनस थ्री एंड क्यू इज़ द पॉइंट वन फाइव इन ए पार्ट कैलकुलेट द लेंथ ऑफ पी क्यू ओके सो द लेंथ ऑफ पी क्यू इज हैज अ फार्मूला स्केयर रूट ऑफ एक्स टू माइनस एक्स वन होल स्केयर एक्स टू इज़ वन एंड एक्स वन इज थ्री सो वन माइनस थ्री होल स्केयर प्लस वाई टू माइनस वाई वन होल स्केयर सो दिस इज स्केयर रूट ऑफ वन माइनस थ्री इज माइनस टू होल स्केयर एंड फाइव माइनस माइनस बिकम्स प्लस एंड फाइव प्लस थ्री क्विंस टू बी एट सो एट स्केयर एंड स्केयर रूट टू स्केयर इज फोर एट स्केयर इज क्विंग टू बी सिक्सटी फोर एंड फोर प्लस सिक्सटी फोर इज सिक्सटी एट सो स्केयर रूट ऑफ सिक्सटी एट एट पॉइंट टू फाइव वी कैन से is the length of pq now for part b find the equation of perpendicular bisector of pq perpendicular bisector of pq it means first we need to find the slope of pq slope of pq and its formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so just substitute the values here so y2 is 1 5 minus माइनस थ्री ओवर वन माइनस थ्री सो फाइव प्लस थ्री इज एट ओवर माइनस टू सो दैट इज इक्व टू माइनस फोर एंड द स्लोप ऑफ परपेंडिकुलर बाई सेक्टर इज गोइंग टू बी स्लोप ऑफ परपेंडिकुलर बाई सेक्टर ऑफ पी क्यू इज नेगेटिव रेसी प्रोकल द नेगेटिव ऑफ फोर इज फोर एंड द रेसी प्रोकल ऑफ फोर नेगेटिव ऑफ फोर माइनस फोर इज फोर एंड द रेसी प्रोकल ऑफ फोर इज वन बाई फोर सो दैट इज गोइंग टू बी द स्लोप right and we need the midpoint of pq to get the value for b yes so first i would like to find the midpoint of pq midpoint of pq is x x1 plus x2 over 2 comma y1 plus y2 over 2 right so we have x1 is 3 1 minus 3 5 so just substitute that is 3 plus 1 divides 2 comma minus 3 plus 5 divides 2 so this is going to be 4 by 2 comma 2 by 2 so 4 by 2 is 2 comma 1 that is the midpoint now for finding the equation of perpendicular bisector we know the equation of a line is y equals to mx plus b right and we have the m value is equals to 1 by 4 so y equals to 1 by 4x plus b and to get the value for b we need to use this midpoint to 1 x is to y is 1 so we have 1 uh, here One by four. This is two plus b. That is two times two is four. And one minus one by two. That is equals to one by two. This is going to be the b value, right? So now the equation of perpendicular bisector of PQ is going to be y equals to one by four x plus one by two. y equals to one by four x plus one by two. So that's the equation of perpendicular bisector of PQ. So that's the last question of our paper. If you have any queries, please let me know in a comment section, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Take care. See you next time.